Nathan Gorman, IBF International Heavyweight Champion. Good morning, sir. How are you doing? Very well, mate. Are you? How are you? I'm very I'm well. Thank you, Crofty. I'm good. That's the main thing. <laughs> it's the main thing that we're both well. I think that's the main thing. Um we have an announcement. We have fight news. Um tell us a little bit about yeah. what's down the pipe. Well, uh, the news is um I think Everyone's got a bit of an inkling. It's uh, the British heavyweight title against me and Fabio Wardley. I think it's a, a really, really intriguing matchup. Obviously, Wardley unbeaten with 95% or whatever it is, KO ratio. And you got me, I can fight a bit as well. So uh, it's going to make a, a, de a decent matchup. One, I'm very, very, very confident and we're going to do the business. Um, my second time now for the British title. So. I can't let this one slip, you know what I mean? So I'm going there with both hands and I'm taking it, I'm taking it home with me. There's a lot for me to pull out of that. I'm going to start with, I can fight a little bit as well. You can fight yeah. a little bit as well. And last time Just out, I thought you'd get the job done against Thomas Salak, who, yeah. okay, you, you got it done in a round, but you rightly couldn't overlook this guy. Uh, Definitely not. How different is the task in Fabio Wardley? Um. Hopefully, it could be the same task as uh, Thomas Salak. You know, I mean, if I land on him, it's uh, curtains. Like if I done with Thomas Salak, Thomas Salak was a credible opponent. You know, champion of his country. He went five or six rounds of cash league, and he was one of them fighters. If he didn't put it on him, he, he grew in confidence. So, from the opening bell, I was just on him. That's my um, plan here with Wardley because, I, in my opinion, I don't think he's been tested. He hasn't had a cut eye or dropped. In all fairness to him, he hasn't. He hasn't um, let the opponent do it to him, really, has he? Because he's always chinned them. So um, it would be interesting to see what happens to him when he gets past round six in the championship rounds. Do you have to be wary uh, of the power of, of Fabio Wardley? Like you say, to, to put it in your words, he's he's got a record of chinning opponents. Um, yeah. How do you how do you how do you deal with that? Of course, you got to be wary. Listen, mate. I this is the truth. Any I think any man over fifteen stone hits on points of the chin, it's curtains. Um, so you got to be wary of every heavyweight. I've never met a heavyweight yet who can't punch. So I'm, I'm probably a Wardley would be another one. But I think it's how you deal with getting it. Um, there's some fighters out there, they get it and they think, oh, this is up for me and they'll take it me and that's it. See, there's other fighters out there, they get it, they'll throw two or three back. Then that's, it tests you then what you're made of then because um, you're in a proper fight, aren't you? You are, in a, you are in a proper fight here. You you alluded to the fact that this is your second bite of the British title cherry, so mm -hmm. to speak. What does that change? You know, given, I'll, I'll use your own words back towards you, you said you can't let this slip. How, mm -hmm. how, how do you not let this slip? Well, it's my second time for it. Uh, obviously, my first time, I thought for sure, against Dubois. But it is where it has happened. It took it as, as an experience. This time, there's no excuse for me, you know what I mean? So, I've got a new team around me. Um, I'm feeling the best I've ever felt. So, when I get in that ring come 26 November, I just know that when Wardley looks across the ring, he's fighting the best Nathan Gorman. Um, because I've been in camp for about five months. Well, since end of June, I've been in camp. So, I've been... I've, Feeling really, really good and healthy, thank God. So, I'm looking forward to it. How How is this Nathan Gorman different to the Nathan Gorman that stepped between the ropes versus Daniel Dubois? That, a completely different man. Um, the man what fought Daniel Dubois, no disrespect, was an absolute shadow of himself. Um, it was, it was, like I said, it was, it was an experience. I take I take things as experience now, looking about the time it was. Um, obviously I was devastated but now looking back at it it was an experience this man now I'm a lot older you know, I'm 26 I was 22 when I fought Daniel just turned 22 um, I've had a couple more fights I've been around the world sparring a bit so I've gained a lot of experience I've shared the ring with a lot of good world champions you know sparring etc in the past four years um, and I've got a good training team behind me. You know, my S and C strength and conditioning. I'm doing that properly three, four times a week. Um, literally, I'm doing everything. I've got everything on board. So, like I said, there'll be 
no excuses. Are you allowed to share any of the names of the world champions that you've been sparring with? Um, I well, I can't, I can't, I can't. But um, like, oh, that that an accumul- an accumulation of the four years, like the the, the bits I've, I've been, I've, I've obviously sparred a lot with Tyson, um, uh, sparred Joe Joyce, sparred uh. What's his name? What was Box Wilder? Robert Lane. I went over there. Spared Robert Lane for a week. Uh, it was so bad. Literally, I've spared t- tons of people in the past. What I've done is I just went round sparring every every Tom Dick and Harry. So I was gaining a lot of experience. I, I have to ask. So, I know there's the I know there's the family connection as well. Family connection, esteemed, extremely highly regarded world champion. How did it go, Tyson, uh, sparring Tyson Fury? Really good, a good experience for me. Listen, he's the he's the best heavyweight in the world, and he for a reason. So, you know, what I mean, he's um, extremely, extremely good. It's only, it's only. Uh, listen, you're not going to go there and put it on Tyson Fury. He's the best heavyweight in the world. Yeah, I'm just being real. Um, we had a, it was a good spar, good learning for me. That's what it was. Um, who else? I've been in Peter Fury's gym quite a bit this. Past couple of months sparring there as well, so it's all it's all good for me and it's all building and learning. Not not to ask you to divulge too much about the sparring, and I, I promise we'll move on after it. But the, another name that you mentioned there was Joe Joyce, who's who's really sort of set the standard, if you like, for the British title, yeah. the British champion, yeah. uh, and how they should conduct themselves. I think in in recent in recent times, yeah. he's, you know, he, he, he's off the back of a career high win now. He's looking to move on and progress through that career level, if you like. Um, how did it go sparring, Joe? And is that the kind of reign and legacy you want to have when you hold the British title? million percent. Listen, mate, I've always been a fan of Joe Joyce. Um, when the fight got announced with him and Daniel Dubois, I can remember doing like three or four interviews and people asking me, who do you reckon will win? Even though I got beat by Daniel, I said, Joe Joyce. And they was looking at me thinking, yeah, of course he will. But I knew because I, I always knew because Joe Joyce has got a, a, a big engine, he throws a lot of punches, and he wears you down. And he's and he's strong. He has twenty stones, six foot six in the air. You know what I mean? And throws tons of punches. He is he is going to get to you eventually. Um, but yeah, that's why I want to do. I want to do what he's done because, in my opinion, I think Joe Joyce fought everyone there is out there, and he like he takes all from as a ghost. And no one wants to fight him either. No, fair play. So let's look at your fight then. Preparation is going well. Uh, it's it's on a big card. Is one of the most important things for you learning to adapt, or maybe maybe this is what you're saying that you have learned to adapt. Is not so much the boxing side, but it's how to handle the, the pressure that that comes with fighting in such a big fight. Is that one thing that I think is that one thing that you you think you've brought into your to your arsenal? Um. Yeah. Definitely. Listen, I've been on the big stage before now, and I do big fights and stuff. So I've learned, I've learned, I've learned it all. All the media, you know, everything else, I've learned it all. So um, it's all, it's all in the bank for me now. Um, you just can't get caught up in it, really. Mm-hmm. All that my main concentration is is Fabio Wardley and fighting him and winning that British, British British title. That's it. What would it What would it mean to you to hold the British title? And I think it's um. To be a British heavyweight champion, it's a massive thing, isn't it? Um, it's the ma- I think it opens a lot of keys to a lot of doors. Uh, a lot of doors opens a lot of do- doors. Sorry. So um, I think from there you could potentially be on like world world scene, couldn't you? What Very about, quickly. What about personally? To have that belt around your waist or over personally, I'd love. To, I'd, I'd, personally, I'd love to win it. You know, not just for me, for my family as well. So. Um, that's one of my main, my main things. That's why I'm willing to do what I'm going to do to win it for them as much as me. Given the platform, I, I want to ask as well about your, your Wasserman time at the moment because it's it, it's a it's a big time for Wasserman with, with Josh Kelly, you know, your stable mate. Oh, yeah. At Wasserman, also going for the British title. What what a big yeah. end for year. Well, this is what I'm saying. The Wasserman, Wasserman boxing could have two British champions by the end of uh, this year. So, it'd be fantastic, wouldn't it? I think the both of us are really in... Pair, the pair of me and Josh were in, obviously, boxing Troy Williamson and boxing Wardley. We we're both in intriguing matchups. I think the pair, pair of them fights, it catches the public's imagination, I think. 
you got Kelly against Williamson, obviously himself against um, Wardley. You hardly see nowadays good domestic dust-ups. Mm. They always divert each other and go different routes, which I prefer the traditional way. So you've got to commend Wasserman and um, the Silent Brother and everyone else for making these bouts happen. I think it's really good for us as fighters and for the fans as well. Is Gorman Wardley a proper British title dust-up? A domestic dust-up? Most, m- most definitely. Just, most just definitely. Heavyweight title. dust-up. A, he- a British heavyweight dust-up. A potential contest yeah. in the making, you yeah. might say. Uh, just, yeah. just finally, Nathan, just on this fight, we, we should sign off with this fight. Uh, I'm going to put it, put the spotlight on you a little bit. Give me a, give me a prediction. Uh, Nathan Gorman win all the way. Um, you know, I'm not settling for nothing, nothing else. I'm prepared to do what it, what it takes. Come that night, you know, win that British title. Will you score the knockout? That's what I'm going there for. <laughs> well, listen, we're going to spend some time with you in the coming weeks. Uh, it will come quicker, and I think you know this better than oh. anyone. It comes quicker. Uh, than quicker than I. But, but listen, Nathan, all the very best. We can't wait to see you soon, mate. Cheers, Chris.